Holy Bible. The Holy Bible literally means a book that is set apart. The Bible is a book that is set apart from every other book ever written or any other book that will ever be written. What makes it unique is that it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is God's own self-revelation to us a revelation of who he is and what it is that he desires of us and who we are and our great need for him. There is no other book that is more important than the Bible and there's no other topic more important than the topics covered in the Bible. There is nothing in life more necessary for us to know than to know the God who created us and redeemed us through Jesus Christ, and to have his Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts. It is here in this book that God reveals himself to us, makes known to us who he is and what it is he desires of us, makes known to us who we are, our meaning and our purpose in life, and also makes known to us our need for a redeemer. And it is in this book that we come to know who our Redeemer is. And our Redeemer is, of course, Jesus Christ. Maybe you're new to the Bible. You've never read the Bible before, and you're not quite sure where to start or, or what to do with this book, how to, how to go about studying or what to make of it. Maybe you've been away from the Bible for a time. You, uh, uh, you have read the Bible before, but you've just been away from it and have not really read it or studied it, studied it recently. And you're, uh, now that we have this, this time of, uh, of quarantine and stay-at-home orders, uh, maybe you've had some time and, and you've been thinking about picking up the Bible but not quite sure if you did what to make of it or where to start or how to study it. Or maybe you have already read the Bible before and you're just not sure what to make of it or maybe as you've read it before you have gotten lost in all the different styles of writing and the different books of the bible and just weren't quite sure where to start and how to follow a theme that runs through the bible you weren't quite sure what the plot line was well i have a book that will be of great help to you uh, it's titled guide to the bible a visual theology it's by tim challies and uh, josh buyers and I highly recommend this book to you. It goes through the Bible. It begins, uh, if you were to look at the, uh, the table of contents, it's broken into three different parts. Part one is trusting the Bible. What is the Bible? How is the Bible written? How are the books collected? What makes the Bible unique? Can we trust the Bible? Part two is about studying the Bible. Why should I study the Bible? And how do I study the Bible? And then part three is about seeing the Bible. And it, then it, that's where it covers, uh, takes you through the whole plot line of the Bible from Genesis and creation to Revelation and the end of time. And the plot line throughout the whole thing is Jesus Christ. And this book kind of follows and plots that line out through scripture. So it talks about the Bible. The Bible is God's gift to you. It's one collection of two testaments made up of 66 books written, assembled, and preserved so that we might know Jesus Christ and his salvation. Uh, as we look through the book, we'll see uh, that, the, that the New Testament in particular is, uh, is reliable. The, we have more uh, manuscript evidence for the reliability and the original texts preserved for us through the ages than any other ancient writing. Uh, so we know that the words that we find in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament are reliable uh, and they're, they're original to the, uh, the, the original writers of the Bible. So we can trust them and rely upon them. The book talks about why do we study the Bible, and it goes through several different topics. It, it covers each one of these individually. We do so to know God, to know God's will, to become godly, to bear fruit, to defend ourselves, to fuel our prayers, and to fuel our joy. It 
talks about how do I study the Bible, and it gives uh, four great uh, four great methods uh, to use in studying the Bible. To observe, what does the passage say? To interpret, what does the passage mean? To apply it, how does the passage transform us? And the importance of memorizing Scripture, to use the passage over and over again. Again, the book traces through the plot line of the Bible, which is Jesus himself. And so in, in the final section of the book, we see how Jesus is revealed from the beginning in creation all the way through to the end of time in Revelation. The need for Jesus, the foundation for Jesus, the preparation for Jesus, the longing for Jesus, the expectation of Jesus, the coming of Jesus, the continuation of Jesus, the commands of Jesus, and then finally, the consummation in Jesus. And the book covers each one of those in some detail. The book also has some great charts to help unfold and unpack the Bible and to, to uh, put it in terms and in, in pictures that makes it easier to understand. The book of Psalms, for instance, there's, a, there's 150 Psalms, and this one breaks it down into the different types of Psalms. Thanksgiving psalms and penitential psalms and precatory psalms and psalms of ascent, psalms of praise. And so uh, it also gives breaks down uh, who each uh, psalm is ascribed to, who, who is, is counted as responsible for writing or inspiring that psalm. I think it's a great chart to sort of open up the book of psalms. Here's a chart that gives us a hundred references, prophecies, and fulfillments of prophecies. And so it talks to us about Christ's birth, Christ's ministry, Christ's death and resurrection, and it gives us prophecies in the Old Testament and then their fulfillment in the New Testament. So we know that Jesus uh, is who he says he is. We just came through Passion Week and Easter, and here is a, a table that sort of walks through a timeline of the Passion Week. And I wish I had had this to be able to post it for you uh, as we entered into uh, that time of reflection on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then finally, here's a table about the New Testament letters. Who wrote them? Where were they written? When were they written? To whom were they written? And, and it even gives a sort of a breakdown of the, the uh, topography, if you will, the, the geography of where those places are and what that might have looked like. Again, this is a great, a great book that just sort of makes it easier to see the meaning and purpose of Scripture and to follow the plot line throughout, uh, throughout the Bible. The book opens in its introduction and says some of this. The Bible tells us who we are, why we exist, why we are so messy, how we relate to God, and how everything will someday be made right. It is reliable when it describes past events, theological when it describes divine truths, and inspirational when it calls for a heartfelt response. The Bible makes monumental claims about itself. It describes itself as light to guide the lost, medicine to revive the sick, wisdom to correct the foolish, inspiration to cheer the sorrowful, balm to heal the blind. It insists that it's more valuable than gold and sweeter than honey. It declares that it's able to teach truth and correct error, that it will guide us away from unethical behavior and towards behavior that serves and blesses others. And indeed it does that because it draws us to Christ and it shows us Christ throughout Scripture. Again, I recommend this book to you. If you're watching this video and you do not have a copy of God's Word, you do not have a Bible of your own, Go to our webpage, greenwoodarp.org. Get in contact with me, and we'll make sure to get you a copy of the Bible. Uh, I'm not exactly sure we can yet afford to be able to provide you with a copy of this book, but the information, uh, the, uh, here is the information on how you can order a copy of that, and I'm sure you can find them uh, a very affordable price on Amazon.com if you absolutely can't afford a copy of this book. Again, get in touch with me, and we'll see if we can get a copy of this book and the Bible for you. If you have questions or thoughts, uh, give me a call, uh, send us an email, and I will be glad to respond with you. I would love nothing more than to be able to talk with you about God's Word and to share the joy that we know in Jesus Christ and how we come to know that in God's Word. Until then, may God richly bless you, 
and I will look forward to hearing from you, and I will look forward to the time when we can finally come back together after this time of the coronavirus and, and gather around God's Word and to worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, until then, may God richly bless you. Amen.